Senator Birch Brown is calling from the airport, Mr. President, on 9 1. President, this is Birch Bye. Yes, Birch. I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Uh, getting ready to go out to the our state convention. And I thought you ought to be appraised, and if you've got a second, I'd really like to have your advice. I wouldn't have bothered you, except one evening when we were sitting there in the White House, you looked down at the end of the table and said that uh, I should be careful about this Vietnam thing, and Indiana was not a uh, good state on this. And we've been having a hell of a time with that senior colleague of mine, in which he has succeeded in blackmailing, I found out this noon, uh, our state committee and really our congressmen, all of whom are running, about the way the platform is, is worded, in which instead of coming right out and saying uh, that we uh, support the president on the course that we're taking in Vietnam, uh, we've worded something like this, we commend our president for the strong and enlightened determination he has consistently displayed in advancing the rights of free men at home and abroad for his determination to assist people everywhere to ward off communist aggression and to enjoy self-determination and for his untiring efforts to bring about an honorable and lasting world peace. I don't, in my estimation, we're making a mistake. Uh, my neck's not on the chop block as far as who's running this time, and they're just scared. Vance is threatened to take this to the floor and make an open floor fight of the damn thing. I know we could beat him, but the thing that concerns me personally is that uh, uh, he is giving the keynote speech in which I am concerned that he might come out with a vitrolic uh, anti-Vietnam speech, and I am following him as permanent chairman. My my gut reaction is to, to really cut him up on the thing. Now, let's see, what is this language that you're reading? What is that proposed? Uh, that will be a resolution which will be proposed to the convention. And he will oppose that? No, he will buy this. I don't see anything wrong. Well, it, it takes out of there any reference to Vietnam. So well, that's all right. But I, I, would, I don't care about the uh, Democratic Convention ever getting with Vietnam. I, it's not a Democratic uh, thing. It's an American thing. It's both conventions. And when you get into a, you get into a state convention that way, I think that uh, I just take the position that you don't want to make a Vietnam a partisan matter. And if you go to urging one course of action in a specific country while the other, the Republicans, may just be opposed to you on that basis. And I think your language is all right, and I think you're from a pretty dangerous, isolated country. Things are going pretty well in Vietnam. Vance is upset I, uh, because he's got uh, family problems and he's got uh, influences around him. And uh, very frankly, uh, uh, Vance is running with some bad people. and. Uh, He's going to he's going to be sorry in due time. We have some experiences like that now, but I'm watching his old card awful careful. And you don't want to get in a fight with him, and you don't want to embrace him. You just stay as as reserved and as distant as you can without being uh, provocative and without being ugly, because you've got a great future. So Mr. But Vietnam is going to work out all right. Uh, uh, if, if the people here don't lose it for us. What if he comes out, Mr. President, though, in his keynote speech immediately before I take the gavel and gives you unmitigated hell and points to the fact that the school lunch program and the agricultural research, I've heard him do it. Uh, he did it, in fact, uh, before our Jefferson Jackson Day dinner, in which he, he said that this was all caused by the Vietnam War and that this was why he was opposed to it and this type of thing. Now, do you think I can just uh, ignore that, sir? Yes, I think I would. I just, uh, I'd, uh, I think that, uh, uh, I don't like him shooting at you like that. No, I don't either. I don't either. I, I think it's very regrettable, but I think it, uh, I think that, uh, uh, Birch, I honestly think that he's hurting himself in due time. I think he'll ride kind of high now because he'll have Republicans boost him, and he's got to Elliot Janeway and a few of these New York boys that are, I call it some signals for him, and he's enjoying the the limelight that comes from uh, uh, disagreeing with the uh, uh, president. Anybody can do that. Uh, the most irresponsible man can get up and denounce the president or the first lady or or anybody and get a little attention. Now he's doing it. He hasn't had much in, uh, through the years, so I'm not gonna. I just don't want you to get cut up. And what I'd do if he got up and said that uh, the president. Uh, uh, 
was doing terrible and that he had wrecked this, this these other things and so on and so forth. If I were you, when I uh, when I followed him, I would say that uh, I don't. I'm not here to engage in any uh, uh, personal uh, uh, debate or differences with my colleague. Suffice it to say, I'm very proud of uh, the Democratic Party, the Democratic administration, the Democratic Congress, and uh, uh, I think the record will show that. 85% uh, of our platform was enacted last Congress. The, our administration submitted 91 measures of importance this year on school and health and conservation and important things. And uh, of those uh, 90, the House and Senate have already acted on about 60 of them. And uh, I believe before we get through, they'll act on 75. Some of them will defeat. Some of them will postpone, but it will be a good batting average, 85% uh, last year, maybe 75 this year. And uh, we do the greatest good for the greatest number, and uh, uh, we don't all see everything alike. If we did, we'd all want the same life. But by and large, I'm very, I'm very proud of the overall record contrasted to uh, our opposition. Now, they worry about uh, our having too full employment, labor being tight, getting too much money, and, uh, inflation, and uh, too big a gross national product. Yeah, everything's inflation these days. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you have Republicans, there won't be any inflation. You won't get too much for your commodities, and you won't get too much for your work, and you won't get too much for your labor, and you won't pay too much for anything. It'll be back where you're burning corn and some of these other things that you did back in the 30s. You've never seen a, uh, any inflation in a Republican period, and if you want that kind of stuff you got in a Republican period, it's all right with me. But I just don't believe any farmer wants to or any worker wants to. Uh, and there are not even many bankers that want to. And that's the way I'd answer it, and I'd just get off my shoulders. I wouldn't fall out of him. I wouldn't get personal. He is riding. He is riding for uh, for bad days. He can't, uh, uh, he, can't uh, he can't go this way always, and I'm not going to quarrel with him. And uh, you notice I, I haven't, he says something ugly about us nearly every day. And we don't, uh, we don't fuss at him, and I don't want you to, because you, you're going to have to have Indiana someday, and you want everybody in that you can get. And uh, if they say, why don't you answer him? You'd say, I did answer him. And I answered him in a high, lofty manner. I'd say that the, there never was a Congress in the history that agreed with the president more. And the Congress agreed with us last year, and the Congress agreed this year. It didn't have me too. It moderated, it amended, it improved, it changed. But it was constructive, and it moved. It passed 24 education and health bills. And practically every man here voted for them. And of course, when you stay in office for a while, they like to be critical. When you have a war on your hand, I didn't start this thing. I didn't make this commitment. But I have my choice of evacuating out there and running or standing and fighting. And if I evacuated and ran there, I would be evacuating 41 other alliances. I said to a group of Jewish friends of mine in New York the other night that were real worried. Rabbi Weinstein had got them all worked up. And I said, now let me ask you fellas if the commitment that Eisenhower and Kennedy made in Vietnam is not worth a damn. And that alliance is no good. And the promises we made to come to their rescue and attack uh, be thrown out the window. What about our promises to Israel? And if they're no good to a nation of 14 million, what about a nation in the Middle East of only 2 million? And by God, you think that over. And what are they to NATO? And what are they to ANZUS? And what are they the other 41 we got? And uh, they, they start singing a different tune. And what are they to Indiana? So by God, if he advocates breaking up what we've promised, well, I, I don't have to let medical care apply to Indiana. Wouldn't that be fine? I'd just say I'm not going to carry it out. Now, this is the law of the land. This is a solemn promise. And I didn't vote for it. And John Kennedy didn't vote for it. He was in the hospital in Florida with a bad back, and I was in the hospital with Mayo with a kidney. Van Dirksen didn't vote for it. But 82 of the others did. 
Now they can demagogue and run and so forth. But I'm going to stand and fight. I remember old Louis Ludlow demagogued the hell out of Roosevelt. He wanted us all to vote before we drafted a boy to have a public referendum. And I was big enough damn fool to sign his petition. And after they got to debating it and people got to laughing about it, I saw I was peace. We called old Louis Mother Peace. But we all had this peace jag that Fulbright's got. And of course you got peace. But hell, if we had peace, we never would have been in existence. Well, Mr. President, it's just that because of your friendship to Marvell and me, I've had the chance to, to hear you and, and see this great burden that you're carrying around, and it just imposes a double obligation on me to watch out when these son of bitches start out trying to make a fool of you. And I well, just, it just kept me in they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. We gained four points this week in the, in the gallop. Four points. And we're going through some dark days. We may go down to ten. It may be hard to even speak to us, but that's not the, the test of a, of a strong president, a great president, a statesman, uh, whether it's Lincoln or Wilson or Roosevelt or Truman or, or Kennedy. is not how popular they are. It's whether what you do is based on principle and right. Now, we've got some terrible decisions out there, and I've made them, my friend, and some of them are behind us. And you'll be reading about them in due time, and it's gonna, you're going to have to hold on to your hat. But one goddamn thing, sure, you're not going to see us run. And uh, uh, I've got uh, some boys involved, too. And uh, I just rode down on the elevator with Lucy's little husband. He's going out to, to just go into his two weeks training in this camp. And his brother, the only brother he's got, is a Marine, right at Denang, right tonight. He just went out in the Operation Double Eagle and had killed 191 Midcon and lost 13 of his 37. So every order I issue, I know, and I issued one yesterday that will probably cost me uh, uh, a goodly number of men, and I knew it when I issued it, and they told me it would, but I got to do it to protect the others. So Vance is upset. He's got, he's, he doesn't want his people held. I never saw a heart key anybody spell his name that way. Don't get scared when you get in the war. They don't. Uh, I could tell you that from looking to Sue to Myers at Fredericksburg. <laughs> I just wanted you to know, Mr. President, that just because we got one guy that feels that way. Oh, I know that. I know. Well, uh, what you do is, though, don't you get involved in the personal thing. You hit it on a big, broad scale, on the general basis of the Democratic Party, and you'll find that he's voted for practically every damn one of these things. Well, thank you, sir. I, I apologize for bothering you. I appreciate you. it. I just wanted to get your advice. Appreciate you calling me. I just don't want, I want you to live for another day. Thank you, sir. Bye.